Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post watershed production. Good evening, ladies and jelly spoons, and a warm welcome to the show that never knows when to quit. Living proof of that is me, Aaron Bliss, and with the restraining orders to prove it is Michael Large. <laughs> what up? Welcome to another edition of Late Night Large. Anyone who's been paying attention, which I hope is most of you, will know that tonight is our hallowed 13th edition of the show. 13. Unlucky for some. <laughs> well, obviously, we, we went for the obvious theme tonight of superstition in honour of our 13th show. Uh, as usual, we went straight to Wikipedia for the definition. And to, to, to compress it into a sentence, uh, superstition is a belief in supernatural causality. Put very simply, that one event leads to the cause of another without any process in the physical world linking the two events i.e. a black cat's crossed my path, that's why I had bad luck today. That kind of thinking. I'm sure we all have possibly superstitions that we might not admit to. Mike, people who play sports often have little uh, customs that they go through before games. People call them superstitions. Uh, any that you can think of that you practice? No, I can think of people that, that practice them though. Like go for victory wheeze and stuff before <laughs> like in hedges and things. when we were a little bit younger. Um, so you don't put your like your kit on in a certain order every time, or wear like a bracelet or um, something in your sock that brings you luck. No, not did we have personally. someone? Did we have someone in the uh, double winning squad who did something every time? I swear there was someone with a superstition. Well, Chikorito does his little thing, doesn't he? What's that? Like when he like kneels down, kneels down, isn't he, on the, the halfway line, and <laughs> does his little whatever he does. Do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> before just before kick off. Uh, interesting. His little superstition thing. Okay. Okay. Let's take it outside of sport. Do you, Do you have any superstitions, Mike? Really? No, 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 probably none that I'll admit. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, what are the obvious ones? Obviously, there's like you said, the black cat. Walking in front of you, uh, don't walk under a ladder, uh, don't cross on the stairs. Well, actually, to be fair, I ha mm. no. I was going to say, we'll, we'll we'll see if we can, you know, go through the the classic ones, the uh, the ones that are enshrined in history after the break. But for now, I mean, do you don't so you don't think you practice any superstitions at all? None that I'm aware of, but that doesn't necessarily mean. Uh, I mean, does it count as a superstition if it's subconscious? Well, yeah, of course it does. Really? Just because you don't realise you're it doing just, or it. Or is it just habit? Well, that's the thing. Is uh, is for instance, some people could argue that uh, obsessive compulsives could be highly superstitious. Well, I'm sure they could be, but I wouldn't say they necessarily are. Although, if you if you read the definition, right, the definition, a belief in supernatural causality that one event leads to the cause of another. Actually, no, you're right, because the definition ends with without any process in the physical world linking the two events. Of course I'm right. Whereas the, uh, I'm sure the obsessive-compulsive, for instance, someone who... Uh, uh, well, no, actually, no, I was thinking of just, like, cleaning, which obviously is, is you know, an obsession with hygiene. But that that is a physical, a... that obviously is a physical, practical thing that could lead from it. But, for instance, someone who, you know, let's say an obsessive-compulsive who leaves the house and has to lock and relock the door say seven or eight times that yeah. could technically be turned a, a superstition couldn't it because True. surely they think there's something they think there's something wrong will happen if they if they don't perform that ritual maybe or do the, is there another reason they do it for example I don't know say someone who has to have all their pens on their desk facing north east or towards Mecca <laughs> yeah I mean what poss you know you wouldn't call that superstition part of the I guess no uh, yeah you make a good point I always I make a good point Aaron um, I'm top good point maker 
Do you think superstition? Do you think then that superstition has a big hold on society? Does it have a big influence on people generally in the UK? I'd say not really anymore. Not these days. It would have done a lot, a lot more. Kind of uh, say two hundred years ago, perhaps. pre pre enlightenment, pre enlightenment. Yeah, would, yeah, would yeah. probably be the time. I says, how about you? Do you think it has some sort of? Well. I don't know. We could argue this. I mean, obviously, it probably would with, not. It would with particular people, maybe, or particular circles of people. But as as a society as a whole, mm. I wouldn't say it has. Well, what we're going to discuss after the break, I think, is uh, do you classify religion as superstition? The following section has been removed due to copyright infringement. Sorry about that. Fight the power. I'm going to open a can of worms here. The wormiest can I can think of opening, to be honest. Mike, do you think religion, or religion, however you pronounce it, do you think, it, do you think that could be classified as superstition? I think so. Well, ca- well careful well, where you tread here. Uh, n- yeah, without... I mean... How controversial do you go? Uh, <laughs> no. Um... <laughs> Well, Bear in mind well, I guess we if are... you go back to the definition... Yeah. Although we should say, I mean, let's be professional here and check our sources, because obviously Wikipedia is <laughs> giving us the definition here. Let's just check the uh, reference link uh, that Wikipedia... Um, they've uh, they've actually garnered it from Encyclop- uh, sorry, the Encyclopedia of the Enlightenment by Ellen Wilson and Peter Ryle. So it sounds like a, a quality reference... So let's assume that that is an accurate definition of superstition. But I'd say it's an accurate definition of well, of what yeah. No, is I, I do anyway, that. My I, interpretation. Yeah, no, I do as well. But part of part of trying to convince people is obviously you, you don't just say what you think. No, it's what I think, to, and that's right. Yeah. And people have yeah, to. Yeah, I, I thought that might be how you think. <laughs> that's exactly how I think. You're born politician, Mike. The reason why I was saying this is because the next kind of lines in the uh, Wikipedia definition actually say. Basically, superstition, the word is often used pejoratively to refer to practices other than the one prevailing in the given society. And the example it gives is how people would, say, deride voodoo. And yet, another example would be Christianity. Mm. I'm not trying to insult or belittle Christians or any other major religion, but let's face it, it falls into the category of superstition, does it not? I think so. Although no, it's that, a belief in a su- in supernatural causality. Well, let's let's be fair as well. There are some very open-minded religious people. I would argue that the more open-minded and easygoing religions, say tolerant religions, Christianity in its best form, Islam in its best form, um, whatever else in its best form, that are open to other ideas and do not take their religious scriptures too literally perhaps they don't fall into it but if you if you are talking referring to someone very devout who takes passages from whichever religious scripture as gospel then they'll be extremely upset by what we're saying they i really doubt that anyone a fundamentalist is listening to this but what i mean is the belief in supernatural causality right that would dictate for instance that you believe that god causes certain things like say a, na- a natural disaster like I say yeah. go back to the definition and but, religion but that, is a superstition but no I would argue that not all religion falls under that umbrella though because look name me one that doesn't one, no one event leads to the cause of another without a process in the physical world i.e. that suggests that God or whoever you believe is the creator would have to intervene or would have had to intervene at some point in time. God created us. That was him, his intervention. And okay, point taken. Yeah, thank you. So, what do uh, what do you religious people out there in Mate Mate Large World think about Mike deriding your beliefs? Let us know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually, do uh, get on get if, on Facebook. If you are too offended, please ask God to strike down Mike Large. No, where not. he sits right now. No, 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 no. No, no. Actually, yeah, go for it. <laughs> no, no. Of but course, do seriously, not... let us know what you think. 
uh, what your opinions are. Well, it's a big, it's a big that. subject. It's a huge it a theological subject. debate. Well, obviously, we're trying to take which it which is why, why surely they can't resist and the urge fit it into microwavable chunks. But you know, the point stands. We're we're not we're not trying to state uh, an overwhelming fact about anything. We're just suggesting it out there. that major religions do fall under the umbrella term of superstition. Supernatural causality. Like I was saying, let us know what you think. Facebook, <laughs> Late Night Large, get involved. Please do get involved. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break now. The following section has been removed due to copyright infringement. Sorry about that. Fight the power. We're going to go into the slightly slightly obvious uh, route now um, the, the classic superstitions the superstitions that we all remember growing up with the, the sort of the top ten if we if we can think of ten well if we can get off the internet anyway okay Mike the first one that's that's come up and the, probably the first one that came into my head anyway don't walk under a ladder you invite bad luck invite bad luck yeah about that doesn't really Okay, no, that's, no, no. that's one of the ones I can't really. Just quickly, have anything. you ever walked under a ladder? Most probably. Have you ever received bad luck within the next few couple of days? Because Not to of... my knowledge. There we go then. I can think of bad luck. As I know people emanating. That won't do it. Yeah, and I think it probably emanates from walking under a ladder. You're more likely to strike the ladder and knock off whoever's on it, or things that tend to it's rest common on common sense. Things that seem to tend to rest on a ladder are things like pots of pain so I wouldn't really tempt fate myself walking under a ladder oh, no. I, I, w- choice, I would walk, I'd walk around, around it if yeah. possible um, but again you know you could mock mock it by I'd walk it, through very quickly to be fair or jump through it I actually genuinely would or com- well. combat crawl through it no I probably wouldn't do that <laughs> Come back um, roll. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you could argue on the same kind of things as the uh, the ladder because it is a very vague superstition, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, th- there's no particular length of bad luck. There's no particular thing of bad luck. You know, there's no well, there's no particular yeah well, effect. It's not if you do this, this will happen. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, the the latter one. You could also, I'd imagine, putting your elbows on the table. No, actually, that's just that's, that's politeness. That's nice, yeah. Putting yeah. your shoes on the table, opening an umbrella indoors, things like that. The, the, I think they're all along the same lines, aren't they? I think. No, 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 no. It's bad luck. It's bad luck. Put, quick, put it down. Put it down. Yeah. No, it's not really. Make your own minds up on that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, the uh, the next one on the list, <laughs> Mike. I don't know what you think about this. It's something about. I knew sneezes, but apparently uh, hiccups were believed, or are or were believed to be unlucky because uh, they were equated with a possession by the devil. Yeah, I don't really buy that one. That seems pretty stupid to me. Also, it doesn't really sound like a superstition. Yeah, I d- yeah. I'm... It just seems like. I mean, if you're possessed by the devil, I mean that that's not. If you, I mean, that's like saying you must avoid hiccuping. Yeah. Or you've been possessed. Um, I think that one's a write-off. Yeah, I mean, I disagree with that in the workplace. Well, unless Linda Blair had hiccups, breaking a mirror, seven years of bad luck. Now that's a classic. That's one that I well, yeah, I still wouldn't, given the choice. I think we'd all avoid breaking a mirror. Yeah, it's not this uh, more than a uh, yeah. To be honest, sheet of glass or whatever. I, yeah, I, I say I'd rather break a window than a mirror. It sounds stupid, but yeah. I, I probably would. No, I would. Uh, yeah, Mate, I, I, I was think... one I believed in when I was younger as well, or rather, of, of, you know. And this is coming from someone, by the way, who, uh, when he was very, very wee little infant boy playing football in somebody's backyard who I'm not going to name uh, in case he comes back enough. to come back to haunt me <laughs> no I, no it wasn't his oh. it was another one of my friends when I was very very I'm talking maybe six six seven years old I ended up breaking many panes of conservatory glass that were um, lying at the end of his garden from a, a stray football is and this the first time this is coming out are you, no, are you no. <laughs> and some might say that however many I broke has been how much bad luck I've had in my life. That's why my life's been such an abject failure. 
But again, that wasn't a mirror. That was that was just you know yeah, that was so a conservatory I'll, glass. I wouldn't say that really. No. I, I wouldn't like breaking a mirror. It's not just because of the fragments of glass and the chance of gashing yourself open. It it probably is, in the back of your mind, the fact that specific seven years, that's a long time. That's a prison sentence. While we're on the subject of mirrors... Go on. Like the ones where if you look into a mirror and say certain things, then certain shit will happen. Mike, are you thinking of Candyman here? <laughs> Ca- Candyman, for example, there's another one, isn't there? Like Bloody, Bloody Mary, Mary, like... I never ever would ever do them. If really? anyone, yeah, if anyone ever spoke to me about <laughs> it and was like, "Oh yeah, um, blah blah blah," but yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll just do it. It's fine. Yeah, don't care. Whatever. It's not real. Don't be stupid. But I never did it. In fact, when I was younger, mm. and it, oh, I can't believe I'm making myself sound like a tit. When I was younger, I if I found myself looking in a mirror and even thinking. Like Candyman, Candyman. I have to look away, like shut my eyes and not look at the mirror anymore. I, I would, I couldn't even be facing it with my eyes shut and say it three times. Okay, well, it did spook which, me as a young kid which, as which well. Which bordered on the ridiculous, but yeah. Oh dear. There you go. Very good, Mike. Well, of True course. Story there. Well, there you go. Um, I hope you all feel sympathy for uh, that pathetic story of Mike's. Thanks. Black cat crossing your path. Some people consider it bad luck. Yeah, some people consider it good luck. Depends on which superstition you uh Well, for have instance, with, if, a, if a black cat was crossing your path and you happen to barrel over the cat into the road and get run over, that's, quite that's bad thing. luck. And the number 13 being bad luck, where's this derived from? I'm sure Wikipedia would tell us, but what do you think? Well, I have no idea. Because you know there's places in, in America... It's where it's it? good luck. No, no, no. In America, they have... Go on, carry on. No, in America, in their skyscrapers, their lifts don't have 13th floors. They remove the 13th floor from a... Sorry, not remove the floor. They they just don't christen any 13th floor. They go from 12th to 14th. Huh. Is that- and that, and that's that's like a... That's through all the skyscrapers in, in uh, America, as far as I'm aware. Huh. So that's a superstition that affects the business of an entire country, an entire nation. Interesting. It I'll is. tell you what. Should we play another song? Yeah, and while f- while uh, they're listening, well, not while they're listening because it's recorded. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll look up on Wikipedia where uh, we will we'll try. And f- yeah, we'll try and find out more about this. This thirteen. Get your stinking rat out! It's late night, large. <laughs> we just been uh, digging about to find out the origins of the unlucky thirteen obsession. Because, like I say, in most buildings, if not all buildings, tall buildings, skyscrapers and such, they they won't actually christen a 13th floor. They won't name a 13th floor on the elevator. So, yeah, a whole nation is enthralled to this uh, ridiculous superstition. Um, we would look at it... I mean, obviously, it's even got its own phobia name. Triskaidekaphobia is the fear of the number 13. The, the only... The only suggestions we found, or the best suggestions we found, for the origin of the fear of the number 13 is is the reference to the hangman's noose, because 13 turns are included in a traditional hangman's noose, the number needed to snap the neck, and uh, probably the most infamous reference to the number 13 is the number of diners at the Last Supper. It doesn't I, really... I, I, I honestly expected it to, to say give a more specific yeah. reason for it but it's weird and and the Friday it just seems to come from nowhere the Friday the 13th one that no one's really sure about where that origin came from which well, of course it was last Friday it was although again it's well documented that Friday the 13th ironically tends to be the best day for traffic accidents people tend to be because they're extra cautious people tend to be extra cautious rather than mm-hmm. the normal assholes that you see on the road Okay, more superstition. Shooting stars. If you if you see a shooting star and wish on it, then either your wish will come true, or you, no. if you see it, it'll bring you good luck. Now, I've seen many a shooting star in my time. I've never had any bloody good luck though. Ha- have you Have you wished though? Because yes, you, I've wished. Really? Yep. What did you wish for? I can't tell you that. It might still come true. <laughs> but it's Unlikely. been a long bloody time yes. coming. Um, do you know what you, you know what you should wish for? Go on. That'll always come true. Hit me. Death. Can't lose. Way. Morbid. Rabbit's foot. Morbid person. 
rabbit's foot. Carrying a rabbit's foot, either like worn around your neck or in your pocket. Pretty, again, pretty grisly, really. I wouldn't suggest that anyone goes out and poaches a rabbit to saw their foot off. I would. Do it. <laughs> Do you know anyone who's done that? No, not sawn it off, but I mean, <laughs> worn a rabbit's worn a foot or carried it around with them. Uh, I'm sure you can buy them as Lucky Charms. I'm sure you can. Uh, I don't know, maybe. I don't remember ever seeing anyone or hearing of anyone, but I guess if it's if it's common, uh, as this website says, then... We, uh, chances are well yes one it, of us probably knows this someone. is a pretty poor website to be honest but it was the best one we could find for a collection of classic superstitions in like two minutes anyway in two minutes uh, damn you Google uh, apparently I mean this sounds ridiculous uh, there's there's a superstition I have no idea which country or region this comes from eating chicken on New Year's Day means you will be scratching for money but eating pork means you will be fattened with prosperity i.e. money what the, what the hell so, is the co- correlation with that I've... Well, what's, there's not a lot of correlation with most of these that's what makes them superstitions sorry oh, yeah. Very, yeah very good but I mean I, I've never heard that repeated anywhere this is the first time I've read that I'm not sure I've heard that one before I, I either. don't think that could be classified as I've heard something someone said this year actually about eating chicken on New, New Year's Day. Day but I've not heard that uh, particular superstition and it's bad entirety. news to anyone who's uh, popped into KFC after the turn of midnight on New Year's Eve anyway the uh, I think the Colonel's chicken is uh, exempt it clearly is it's good luck chicken um, people apparently believe that when you visit someone's house you should always leave through the same door that you came in any um, thoughts I'm screwed. Personally, I uh, I favour defenestration. You would. Um, if you step I'd... on a crack, you'll break your mother's back. What do you think? Um, I, well, got... you, see, you do see kids like round town, kind of just like jump in between the cracks and things. Oh, I used to do it as well. Did that start? Yeah. Did that start as like a hopscotch thing? Do you think that's where it might have derived? Oh, it's a good possibility. That I'll it's... be completely honest. Yes, I've done it myself when I was a kid. I did it once or twice. I, it's it also makes you super aware of your complete lack of kind of <laughs> your, your basic lack of balance and and what have you when you look directly down at your feet where you're walking. Very difficult to continue that for a long period it, without like swaying. It, or it made me over. aware of my superior balance. <laughs> to be honest, is it was was the case with me. But, uh... Yes, Mike. Uh, I wasn't aware of this last one, but maybe some blushing brides would be. Apparently, if it rains on your wedding day, it's actually good luck. It means you'll be showered with good luck. Yeah, I'll shower you with something. So, <laughs> so all you need to do is make sure it's raining on your wedding day, and then hopefully there'll be no divorce, be a long and happy marriage. But there's no guarantee there, because it probably will end in failure. <laughs> yes, Mike. Um... And the, the final one they, they list here is the thing about saying God bless you after you sneeze uh, because your soul is trying to escape your body. Again, Mike. I think that's probably just a load of crap. <laughs> probably. Most probably just a load of crap, but hey-ho. Well, that was long and maybe not so interesting. That's what she said. <laughs> the following section has been removed due to copyright infringement. Sorry about that. Fight the power. We're talking about superstition. Mike, would you like to give us a rendition of anything while uh, I'm just having a quick look at this uh, list of lucky charms? You're suggesting that I sing to these poor people. Come on, take it away. I may actually have a little sing-song, maybe. What, what would you like to... Uh... I, might, I might do a little cover of someone. One of the songs in one of the forthcoming shows, maybe me giving it the big un, as I uh, so like to do. Come on, give us a preview. I'm afraid you're going to have to wait for a preview. You're not that fortunate. I'll tell you what. I'll give you a bloody preview, people. When you get on our Facebook page, you like it, and you uh, you interact make, with us. Make a request for Mike to make yeah. a video of it. You make a request for a song for me to sing, and it may just happen. But we're talking like we're going to, have to put it to the vote, and there's going to have to be at least oh yeah, democracy rules. At least a hundred votes. <laughs> 
get your friends on there. Friends of friends. Show them the page. Show them the money. Expose them to what we do. And I'll expose myself. And if that doesn't get you on the page, I don't know what will. Anyway, Lucky Charms in Western culture. Let's ignore the best Lucky Charms, which are, of course, a breakfast cereal. We all know that. The common Lucky Charms that we can recall, and actually are listed handily on Wikipedia. Four Leaf Clover. Mike, did you ever used to... All the time. Get on your hands and knees, <laughs> All the time. picking around. You know full well three, 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 three. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I found one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I found. I, I think I found. Yeah, I found. I found one before. Um, uh, rabbit's foot, obviously. Uh, we've already, already discussed that. Um, obviously, not too lucky for the rabbit. Horseshoe. A horseshoe is one that I immediately thought of. People tend to. I mean, horseshoes tend to be displayed above doorways, don't they? Yeah. What's that? Uh, why? Um, it, do you know what? We could uh, do a bit of reading into this. Uh, Folklore, mm, talismans. Uh, apparently, superstitious sailors believe nailing a horseshoe to the mast will help their vessels avoid storms. I was under the impression that it, it, it generally got put above the doors of houses to bestow good luck on the uh, on the domicile. Right? People that walk in, and walk out. yeah, yeah. Actually. That's although, isn't it supposed to be hung a certain way, like slightly to the left? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear Charm bracelets Do you believe in these? I mean I've had some Been given some This This some. seems to be <laughs> That's a joke That was a joke That was a joke uh, Well you can tell By the deafening silence It was hilarious <laughs> A little joke for y'all <laughs> So Yeah charm bracelets uh, They seem More like Fun kind of, Consum- Just things to, consumerist yeah, consumers. trinkets really yeah, aren't yeah. they and one thing we we obviously forgot um which is which is a good one is wishbones yeah when you when you find a wishbone and you get another person you tug it what is it two times you tug it twice and then the third time yes you snap it and whoever's got the uh the joining part of the clavicle gets their wish to come true yeah the other person gets left in the dust again i've i've won my share of those in the time in my time, but oh really? Uh, none of my wishes, based on any superstition or lucky charm that I may have made, have uh, yet to come true. So, okay. Apparently, a male tortoise shell cat is considered lucky. Sorry, a uh, what now? A male tortoise shell cat. What's one of those on its own? I, I know what it is. Um, it's a it's it's cat with a weird coat, like patches of orange. Oh, uh, I know the ones. I've I've seen them before, but I mean, I, I don't know if they're that rare that they're considered lucky. Um, Mottled. Yes, <laughs> that's a funny word. Uh, with patches of orange and cream and chocolate, black or blue. Okay, why are they lucky? Again, um, it seems quite obscure to me. I, I don't. I really mean, what about them? I mean, if you see one, is it lucky? Or to I own guess, one. I or... guess if one approaches you, maybe if one approaches you and like you know asks to be petted, maybe that that's the good luck. That gives you his approval. And <laughs> that I'm clutching at straws here, but I'll clutch at something. Uh, we all remember the lucky leprechaun, and of course, maybe that's another superstition that we should throw in. Leprechauns, rainbows. Uh, this one, you know, Check Owen, it out, Owen Smith. What, what you know when he leaves the store? What do you want to hear? Leprechaun. Exactly. So yeah, little in joke. Sorry it, about that. Yeah, if you see if you see a little green dwarf um, dressed in a green costume. No, better still, if you see a massive man. I say massive. <laughs> he's really tall. Uh, called Owen Smith, asking for his leprechaun <laughs> impression. And then, uh, but don't ask to see his pot of gold, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody wants to see that. It's time to round the show off. Really, I was just gonna the the last portion. I thought I'd ask you. Why do you think superstitions? What? Why do you think that they still, well, they're still prevalent in the modern world? I'm not just talking about voodoo and voodoo <laughs> magic, man. <laughs> yes, I'm not talking about the voodoo hoodoo. It, you know, the less developed countries, they're always going to have these kinds of things. Um, I mean, let me put my own tuppence in. Little spin on it. Go on, hit me. 
Yeah. Well, let's face it. Uh, superstition uh, and religion, really, it emerged because mankind in its early evolution obviously didn't know what anything was about. Did it? Did they? I mean, people it, are stupid. It's, it's trying to explain the world around you. Because it's very frightening to people to think that everything is completely random because that's chaos. Chaos prevails. Exactly. Chaos scares the wits out of people. Excites me. Scares governments more than anything else. Mm. Bring the chaos people. But anyway, it, it does actually scare most people witless. Um, so, you know, you need faith and you need superstition to give you the the uh, reassurance. Right on the wall. <laughs> To give you reassurance that there's some higher power that's influencing events. It's not all random. It it's can't all be mind. determined by other people. It's yeah, well, not this. Yeah, in in a, in a way, peace of mind, because yeah, it's the comfort of something that you can kind of. I say I say an rely answer. on something. Yeah, that you have an answer for to answer answer things that are unanswerable. Yeah. Do you think that's which I can normally do? So. I mean, do you think? Do you think? people are more superstitious now do you think it's fading away like religion is because obviously it's fading away pal uh, <laughs> other than other than in well you'd suggest other than is in the islamic world major religions are generally fading away drooping yeah, yeah they are do you think superstitions are going the same way I think do you think there'll come a time in i don't know 50 years or something when in the modern Western world, people people will not practice any silly superstitions anymore. I don't think they'll. Be I, and, but sorry, I'm not. I'm not. I'm I mean, not. Yeah, don't cast judgment on. I'm not demeaning. No, I'm not demeaning religions. Yes, he there. was. No, no, no. I'm. I'm not. Superstitions specifically, the the luck things, the uh, lucky charms, the evil eye, these kinds of things. I think they're going to continue to be less and less potent in the society but as for completely uh, yeah as for as for a society completely devoid of them I don't think that will happen if you had to I mean superstition it always reminds me of Chinese whispers mm. you know like someone once said that's a fun game oh. <laughs> someone you know it's like someone once said oh um by the way uh, you might want to um you might want to just like put a horseshoe above your door because uh, you know I've heard that some shit's going down tonight and then mm. you know someone's like what? oh yeah you put a horseshoe on your door you'll be fine people who you know, obviously weren't that smart back then just, oh, God, oh, I better do that then you might want to paint a, a red cross uh, above your door uh, in sheep's blood <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're getting a bit uh, Jewish here now but um, <laughs> okay let's um, uh, what I was going to say to find, end it on a gag note Mike, what superstition would gag? <laughs> Mike always Sorry, gag. I, I always gag when you're around. So, Mike, what what superstition would you start if you could? Go on. A, any superstition? Well, I could make one and like, make as people in a believe custom it. Practice that people would have to go through because they'd be scared not to. Right, if you don't do this, then this will happen. Yes. <laughs> very, <coughs> very much like the Daily Mail does. <laughs> Without getting sexual, I'm, I'm not sure I'd probably have to put some thought into a serious one. To be honest, I was going down the sexual route. Oh, well. yeah. It, any superstition Sa- Sacrifice make... your first virgin daughter for... Or else... To me. Yes. Or... Or Mike will eat all your children. <laughs> all your subsequent children. <laughs> exactly. I think that's quite a good one, actually. Is it? I think that's a good one. So, please, listeners in Late Night Large World, bring us your first born virgin daughters. <laughs> M- make sure they are ripe, okay? Oh, we're we're, for we're sake. not we're not looking for pre sixteen. We don't promote that at all. That's not cool. I think I may have just taken a step too far. I was just uh, elucidating Mike's own th- inner thoughts. Anyway, superstition. It's a funny old thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there's not much left to do apart from love you and leave you guys. Yeah, uh, please interact on the Facebook page. Hope you enjoyed the thirteenth late night large. Good night, America.